Uganda has taken Kenya to the East African Court of Justice, this after Nairobi denied the neighboring country's government-owned oil marketer a license to operate locally and to handle fuel imports headed to Kampala. Local media report President Museveni accused Kenyan middlemen of being behind the high pump prices in Kampala, even as global prices of the commodity continue to fall. Political analyst David Monda tells viewers Douglas Mpuga that this action presents a big challenge in terms of regional diplomacy. On one hand, it, it shows a big challenge in terms of uh, regional diplomacy because this is a, a black eye on good relations between the two neighbors. Uganda re- relies on Kenya for a lot of its imports. And also Kenya imports a lot of uh, goods and services from Uganda. So I think tensions between the two countries is not good, not only for bilateral relations, but also for regional issues. The other question here is Uganda's frustration with Kenyan middlemen, who the uh, the Museveni administration says are behind high pump prices in Uganda. And uh, I think he's really suing them. He's really pushing this in the public limelight and taking legal route to actually get this question addressed. It's not just been a problem in Uganda, it's also been a problem in Kenya, where Kenyans are complaining of paying higher fuel prices than their neighbors, yet they import this product through Kenya, for example, to Uganda, yet Ugandans are paying less for fuel than Kenya. So it is a major diplomatic crisis, but it's also something that uh, is a a legal problem that uh, the Kenya government needs to address. Uh, it appears that the issue of middlemen uh, inflating the prices of oil in the, in the region uh, is uh, a big one. It's definitely a big one because, uh, as you can imagine, um, oil prices are fundamental to the functioning of uh, not just Uganda or Kenya's economy, but the global economy. When oil prices go up, the cost of other goods and services will automatically go up because uh, economies on the continent of Africa and in the world are really very heavily tied to the cost of oil. This is an, an interesting case, but it's also going to put a spotlight on the uh, East African Court of Justice to really flex its hand in terms of uh, determining who are the bad players in this uh, whole oil marketing saga. And I think it's an interesting move that the Museveni administration has played here to actually put Kenya on the spotlight in the regional court to answer for some of these these questions. Because if they sued through, say, a Ugandan court uh, or a Kenyan court, I don't think the impact would be as strong. So it's really interesting to see regional judicial bodies also being used to try and untangle this mess with the allegations of cartels raising Ugandan oil prices unnecessarily. David Monda is a professor of political science at City University of New York. He spoke from Johannesburg, South Africa, with viewers Douglas Umpuga. Malawi's government is sending young people to work on Israeli farms amid the conflict with Hamas. Critics say the program is shrouded in secrecy and has exposed unemployment issues in the country. Human rights activists argue that young people are willing to take opportunities abroad despite the risks. Chimwewe Padatha reports from the capital Lilongwe. Young people line up in large numbers at registration centers like this one for recruitment under a program that gives Malawians opportunities to work on farms in Israel. They are hoping to join about 600 Malawians who have been airlifted to Israel through the agricultural program. A resident of Blandaya, the country's second largest city, 23-year-old Ruth Kanchunjuru, is ready for such an opportunity. It's a lifetime opportunity. I wouldn't use it because at some part of the country there is war. As Israeli reservists have been called up for military service since the war with Hamas began in October, Malawi is not the only country Israel has been making labor exchange deals with to fill gaps created on farms. Kenya announced that it was sending 1,500 farm workers in December, and Israeli officials said recruitment is underway in Uganda and Tanzania. But the labor exchange program in Malawi isn't without critics. Malawi Human Rights Defenders Coalition, or HRDC, accuses the government of secrecy on the deal. Michael Kayata, the vice chairperson for the rights group, says they want access to information on Israel's treatment of foreign workers. That's why it's important that 
um, he did was, you know, like issues of safety, issues of pay, issues of conditions of service, you know, should be clarified so that the people can make informed, you know, decisions. In the next five years, Malawi's labor ministry says it plans to send at least 5,000 people to work in Israel's farms, but the figure could go as high as 15,000. Youth and Society, or YAS, rights organization, has demanded a clear policy position on the program, says its executive director, Charles Kajolowega. There are no guidelines at the moment that uh, are facilitating or supporting the regulation of uh, this labor export. And the, what is more worrying is that the government is looking at these young people as the commercial tools. Sierra Leone on Tuesday charged 12 people with treason and other offenses for their roles in what authorities have called an attempted coup on November 26th, a news release said. One of those charged was Amadou Koita, whom the government has said was one of the organizers of the coup attempt. A former soldier and bodyguard of former President Ernest Bayi Koroma, Koite, was widely followed on social media networks where he criticized the government of current President Julius Madabio. He was arrested December 4th and is one of 85 people, most of them military personnel, who were arrested in connection with the events of November 26th. The 12 alleged perpetrators, including former police officers, were handed charges including treason, misprison of treason, harboring, aiding, abetting the enemy. According to a news release signed by Information Minister Chenol Barr, 11 of them were brought before a judge in capital Freetown with the case of one of the accused postponed due to illness the statement said adding that all had legal representation on november 26th armed attackers stormed a military armory two barracks two prisons and two police stations clashing with security forces 21 people were killed and hundreds of prisoners escaped before authorities were able to regain control after what they deemed a coup attempt by members of the armed forces. The violence sparked fears of another coup in West Africa, where Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, and Guinea have all experienced patches since 2020.